is what we're going to do yeah we're going to take this poop and then we're going to modify it into a hey guys welcome back to gaming legends today we're talking about jet force gemini Jet Force Gemini is generally not a very well-known title released in 1999 for the N64. Developed by Rare, who usually make good games, this action-adventure seems like it's inspired by the 1997 film Starship Troopers. I guess we'll never know, but they did go to a comic book store in Birmingham to look for sci-fi inspiration. So yes, this does mean it's another British title. The main characters are Juno, Bella and Lupus the Dog. Perhaps you've heard of this game, or maybe you even played it, but did you know the whole game is less than 30 megabytes? What sorcery is this? How is it even possible to fit all of this into 4% of a PlayStation disc? That's right, better graphics than Tomb Raider 1 in less than 10% of its file size. In fact, it's not the game that's special, it's the N64. The maximum size of an N64 cartridge is 64 megabytes, which means no game can exceed that. If that's not an engineering feat, I don't know what is. <coughs> Bastard. Fun fact, Jet Force Gemini's code is based off a modified version of Diddy Kong Racing because they share some of the same developers. I initially wanted to make Mario with guns. Everybody, this is a stick up. Empty all the cash registers. Ooh, make a day, a motherfucker. Apparently, there's an early version in the game which featured a fat man in a cape shooting lasers. So basically, this guy. Here's another fun fact John Travolta's in the game. No, not really, but his dancing in Saturday Night Fever is. Speaking of boogieing, the main theme is a modified version of a tune from Conker. Wait, I'm seeing a pattern here. We need to make a game where you save Furbies and ants are evil for some reason. Oh mate, here's what we're gonna do, yeah? We're gonna take this completely unrelated racing game and we're gonna modify it into a third person shooter. Dad, I'm really bored and alone. I want a sister. What, right, lad? Here's what we're going to do here. We're going to take this teddy bear and we're going to modify it with this wig and using the power of your mind, you now have a sister. Oh, sacre bleu, monsieur. Uh, we have run out of seafood. Uh, is it usually in the orphanage you will uh, die of, uh, how you say, le starvation? All right, Pink Panther. Here's what we're going to do here. We're going to take this poop and then we're going to modify it into a... Anyway, the story goes like this. Jet Force Gemini is a galactic law enforcement team, which basically means space police. Oh look, they also have a dog. The team have to stop the evil Mizar and his insect army from enslaving the tribals. You could say that's a crushing victory from the ants. When they finally catch up to Mizar, he sends an asteroid to destroy the Earth. Oh, the plot of every single end of the world film ever. But luckily, they get help from King Jeff. Wait, what? Jeff. King Jeff. My name is Jeff. Jeff is not a king name. I, I don't think there ever was a king named Jeff. Okay, so Jeff gives them a ship so they can land on the asteroid and blow it up. <coughs> Armageddon. So the game mechanics aren't bad for something that used to be a racing game. The aiming's a little difficult compared to modern day shooters which we're used to, but that's the flaw of the N64 single stick controller design and not so much the game. Aside from this, there's all the usual stuff. Running, jumping, climbing, opening chests by shooting them, dancing, and when it comes to shooting, there's a decent selection. It ranges from the lowly pistol to the machine gun, plasma shotgun, two different rocket launchers, all the way to the experimental shocker. So using your commando style collection of weapons, you basically do a lot of exploring on the maps and solve puzzles while you kill insects. The game is very difficult as you progress past the first few stages. The enemies become a lot more powerful and usually shielded and completely immune to damage from the front. On top of this, the game allows you to reach the end and fully exit an area before you complete all the objectives, leaving you to figure out that you have to go back and restart and play through the whole level to find out what you missed. That's assuming you even realise you missed anything in the first place. Game summary time! In a word, quirky. And this game has by far the most ridiculous crawl ever seen. I mean, look at this. It, it's like he's swimming on land. Jet Force Gemini may be every single sci-fi cliche known to man thrown into a blender, sprinkled with modified code and a dash of randomness. But that's a good thing. It's packed full of surprises like the nightclub, racing, this top-down minigame and Mr. Pants, whatever the hell that is. But the game took risks and they made it how they wanted and that makes it special. In a world where each new version is just last year's game with improved graphics and a new skin, being a bit random isn't such a bad thing. But the best thing about Jet Force Gemini is that you can play as a dog with a gun on its back. As always, if you've missed the live stream on Sunday, hear the best bits. Oh, he's, he's having coffee or hot chocolate, I don't know. Let's not assume we know what he's having. Say operate controls and it's just like... Uh, is it, oh, he just threw his, he threw his coffee on the console, man. This font is disgusting, but this is a really bad font. Who crawls like this? Sorry, there seemed to be a lot of coughing in today's show. <clears throat> Follow the channel! If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share and subscribe. And if you didn't, leave a comment and tell us how to improve. Next week's episode is on Mega Man X. See you then.